Hello class and welcome to chapter 9. Uh, chapter 9 is going to be looking at exponential and logarithmic functions. Uh, we're going to start out by looking at exponential functions and this is in section 9.1. So let's look at the example that we are given. Sam is working in a biology class with a petri dish of bacteria. He estimates that he has a colony of about 25 bacteria. Assuming that the population of bacteria doubles okay, every hour, find how much bacteria Sam will have after five hours. So at zero hours, okay, we're starting out, we have 25 bacteria. After one hour, if it doubles, we're going to take 25 times 2, which will give me 50. At two hours, 50 times 2 will give me 100. Three hours, 200. Four hours, 200 times 2 would be 400. And then at my fifth hour, 400 times 2 would give me 800. So it's asking how many will he have after 5 hours. He will have 800 bacteria. Okay. So today we're going to start looking at exponential functions. Um, the reason we have exponential functions is because if I asked you to solve this problem and I asked for 50 hours later, would you really want to make a, call, a table and keep going with this? Most likely not. So we can put this into an exponential function. My exponential function, the way it's written is you always start out with the number that you started with. Okay, So we started out with 25 bacteria. Then it's the rate at which we are you know, growing or decaying. So we're growing by doubling. So to, usually when we say double, we think 2. 2 and then to the x. Okay, So an exponential function, this is an exponential function that would represent the situation, but an exponential function has to have the variable in the exponent. Having that variable in the exponent, that is what makes it exponential. Okay. So we're going to look at exponential functions a little bit more in depth today. Um, but before we go ahead and do that, we're going to look at the other functions that we have looked at this year. Okay. So just remember, our first one is our linear. So that's y equals mx plus b. Biggest thing, remember, is it has an x to the first power. My quadratic, remember, has to have that x squared. So y equals x, sorry, ax squared plus bx plus c. That squared is what make it, makes it quadratic. This one, there's, we would count how many turns we would have. There's two turns, and we add one. So this is a x to the third function. This one, there's three turns, so this is an x to the fourth. There's four turns, four plus one give me x to the fifth. So this is an x to the fifth polynomial. So these are other types of polynomials. Then we dealt with our square root function this year, something that involved a radical. And then our rational function, we had something written as a fraction. Okay, so those are the type of functions that we've looked at this year. The last one we're going to look at is exponential and logarithmic. So looking at exponential, we want to know what is the standard form. Okay, well the standard form for linear is y equals mx plus b. Standard form for an exponential is y equals ab to the x. Okay, this is my standard form. So some properties that we have is the function is continuous and one-to-one. -one. Okay, so to be continuous means you don't pick up your pencil as you draw it. So here's an example of an exponential function. And one to one, it means for every x, there's only one y. And for every y, there's only one x. The domain is a set of all real numbers. OK, so whenever I ask you for the domain of an exponential, every single time, you're going to tell me it's all real numbers. Okay. The x-axis is an asymptote. Okay, So my x-axis, if I look at this graph down here, this is an asymptote, always. Um, the range is all set of positive numbers. Is a is greater than zero, and all negative numbers if a is less than zero. Okay, so your range, there is where your range is. You're going to need to know that for your upcoming test and quiz. Okay, um, the graph contains the point zero a. I told you that a was your starting point um, with our bacteria example. So here it is, a. That's always going to be on there. It's always your y-intercept. And the graphs y equals a b to the x and y equals 1 over b to the x are reflections across the y-axis. Okay, so if, if I take this, OK, 
Okay, see how this is my B is two, and if I take one over two, see how it flipped? Here is my Y axis, and so it flipped across to give me this value. Okay, so here is, here is our two examples of our exponentials. Biggest things to remember, this point right here will always be zero A. So in this case, it's one times two to the X, so zero one. Um, so that's my, my starting value, and then there's always this asymptote here. Okay. Another thing that I'm gonna point out is that my B value if my B value is greater than one, it is a growth, okay? And if, if my B is in between zero and one, it is a decay, okay? So if I look here, I have two, that's my B value. So in this case, it's a growth. If you look from left to right, it gets bigger. Here, my B value is equal to one half, so it's in between zero and one, so it is a decay function. And if I look from left to right, it goes down. So there's my decay. Okay. So now we're actually gonna go ahead and sketch them. Um, biggest thing is that, let's figure out what our A value is. Okay, remember my standard form is Y equals A, B to the X. So A is three. So that means I have always have the ordered pair zero A. So I have zero, three. So when I plug in zero, I get out three. So that means I'm going to start at 3. And then one thing to kind of notice is, is this a growth or decay? Well, my B is 2, so I know this will be a growth. So if I look from left to right, I know it's going to go up. Okay. We can plug this in to our calculator if we wanted to um, and just type it in. So we would have 3 times 2 to the, and that makes you put in parentheses, negative three. Okay, that's gonna get me my first answer, which is 0.375. The quicker way to do this is put this into our calculator and our y equals, okay, and then do our table. So it'd be three times two to the x, just putting in the general equation. And then if I go to my table set, like we've done in the past, I wanna start out at negative three, and I want to, whoops, I did not go to my table set, did I? Table set, right there. Table set, start out at negative three, and we're going to count up. My delta tables, I'm counting up, I'm going up by ones, okay? So, if I go ahead and hit graph, you can see what it will look like, and if I go to my table, I can get my values. So second table is, second table, which is above graph. So here are my y values. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy them down and put them into my, into my table on my notes. Notice I have zero three like I said, okay? So at negative three, we had 0.375. At negative two, I have 0.75. At negative one, I have 1 1.5. Then I would have three, then I would have six, then I would have 12. And notice it's a two so it is doubling. So if I multiply these by two, I am getting the next one. So it's looking right. Now let's go ahead and graph it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to put negative 2.75. And so we have negative three. And then some of the graphs, you will not have enough room to draw them all on. Because like if you notice 212, I don't believe that will fit on here. but I know it's gonna be up here somewhere. So here's my exponential. Um, remember, there is an asymptote right here, so it will never cross that line, okay? Okay, so there is my exponential equation. It wants us to state the domain and the range. Um, remember, domain will always be all real numbers because if I look to the left, I'm going to go all the way to the left. If I look to the right, it's going to keep going all the way to the right. And then my range, okay, it's just going to be that y is greater than, I can never be zero, so not equal, but y is greater than zero. So there is example one. Moving on to example two, we're going to sketch this one. So in order to sketch it, I'm going to make it easy. I'm just going to enter that equation into my calculator. So I go to y equals and it's two times one half, so parentheses are on one half, 
to the X. Then I'm going to go second table set, which is above window. I want to start at negative three and go by ones. So I go second table, just to refresh your memory, and there's my values. Okay, so let's go ahead and put those into my table. When I plugged in negative three, my calculator said it was 16. Negative two was eight. Negative one was four, two, one, and 0.5. One thing to notice is my B value is one half, so that means it's going to be a decay. And if you notice, if, am I going down by one half each time? Yes, I am. Okay. So I would have negative 3, 16. I don't believe that's going to fit on here. Negative 2, 8. Negative 1, 4. 0, 2. 1, 1. 2.5. Remember, remembering we have an asymptote here, so I will never touch or go past that line. There is my exponential. It is decay. If I look from left to right, it is going down. Last thing I need to do is state my domain. Um, always easy. It's always all reals. Or you could write all reals if you wanted to. And my range is y is greater than zero. Um, so the next thing we need to talk about is exponential growth and decay. We've already been talking about this. Um, biggest thing is that if it's growing, you're going to take the rate and add 1. So if I want to figure out what B is, if I'm growing by 25%, my rate would be 1.25. So you, to figure out B, you always take your rate and you add 1 to it. If I'm decaying okay, by 25%, I would put in B is 75 sorry, 75% or 0.75. The way I got that is I would take my B and I would take one minus the rate. Okay. So what will happen to each one of these? Okay. Well, um, once again, I want to add to this up here for my growth. The other thing for growth, remember, is that your B value has to be greater than 1, and then for decay, your B has to be in between 0 and 1. Okay. All right, and I'm just going to, you could also think about this as 1 plus your rate either way. Um, that's the same. Okay, so what will happen to the following of these? Um, cars. What typically happens to the, vo the value of cars? Well, they decay. Okay. Um, gold. Typically the value of gold grows. That's why all those companies want to buy back gold, right? Um, house values. You buy a house because it's an investment. Typically unless the market takes a major crash like it has in the past, but typically a house will grow. Grow in value. And then technology. Well, let's think about it. Your iPhone 6 um, in a few years, probably will be replaced by something else. So this is a decay. Technology, you know, they're always coming up with something newer and better. So there'll be some questions on your homework in regards to what grows and what decays. All right, so example two, we need to determine if it represents a growth or decay. Well, in this case, I'm just going to write down my A value is 1. That does not determine my growth or decay. It's my B value. My B is 1 over 5, which is in between 0 and 1. So in this case, it is a decay. This one, my A is 7, just so we know the difference. And my B is 1.2. Well, B is 1.2. That is greater than 1. So in this case, it is a growth. On to the back side of your note sheet. Okay, suppose you buy a car for $15,000 and its value decreases at a rate of about 8% per year. Okay, so remember our standard equation is y equals a b to the x. To figure out b, if b is a growth, okay, we take the rate plus 1 for growth. If it's decay, we take, sorry, I keep writing that. I want to keep it consistent. My B will be 1 minus the rate um, if it's decay and 1 plus if it is a growth. So this is decay. This one is growth. 
So it says it decreases, so which one do we need to use? Well, we need to use the decay function for my B value. Okay, so it says write an exponential equation for the value of the car after x years. Well, first thing we need to know is my A value. Okay, A is how much we started out with. It started out with $15,000. Then I need my B. Well, it's decay, so we take 1 minus the rate. So in this case, my rate is 8%. So I would have 1 minus, and I put 8% as a decimal, 0 0.08. And so what I would get is... 0.92. Okay, so I would have 0.92 to the x. There is my equation. Part B, what value of the what will the value of the car be in four years? Well, x is the number of years, so I just need to plug in four. Four x. So then I can type this into my calculator. I would do go to my screen, it would be 15,000 times 0.92 to the fourth. Okay, and here would be my value. Biggest thing is that this is talking about money, so we only round to two decimal places, and if you don't round properly, I will take off points. So this one is going to be in four years, the value will be $10,745.89. So there's my answer for example three, part B. Okay, let's move on to example four. Suppose you start an experiment with 45 bacteria. Well, 45 bacteria, that's your A. That's what you started with. And it double every hour. Well, that's telling me my B is equal to two. So my exponential equation is 45 squared to the X. Okay, B says how much bacteria we have after four hours? Just plug it in 4 for x. If you do that on your calculator, you will get 720 bacteria. Just type it in like we did on example 5. Sorry, example 3. Moving on to example 5. In 2000, the population of Phoenix was 1,321,045. And it increased to... 1,331,291 in 2004. Okay, it says write an exponential function that can be used to model the population of Phoenix. Write the function in terms of x, the number of years since 2000. So the number of years since 2000. So in 2000, that means it was year zero. So this is really two ordered pairs. Okay, so we have to do a little bit more work in order to figure out this equation. There will be a problem like this on your notes, so make sure you're paying attention closely. Sorry, problem like this on your homework. Okay, the next order pair we have is that 2004. Well, how many years since 2000 is that? That is four years. Okay, so now I need to go ahead. I know what A is, and the reason I know what A is is because it's when my X value is zero. So this tells me my A value. Okay, so it tells me that's A, and I'm using Y equals AB to the X. Well, this is an ordered pair. An ordered pair is written XY. So this is my X, and this is my Y. So what value from here do I not have? Well, I have a Y from right here. I have an X from here, and I have my A. I do not have B, so I need to do a little work to solve for B. So let's set up what I do know. I know what Y is. equals my A value, then it's B to the X, which is 4. So I need to solve for B. First thing I would do is divide both sides by 1, 3, 2, 1, 0, 4, 5. Okay, I'm going to do that on my calculator. So 1, Three three one two nine one divided by one three two one 
zero four five. Okay, so I'm gonna figure out what that is. Keep this value on your calculator though. Okay, it's one point zero zero seven seven. Okay, so keep that value on your calculator. We're gonna use it in just a minute. equals b to the fourth. Okay, now I want to solve for b. Well, the way I solve for b is if I want to get the, if it's b to the fourth, I would just take the fourth root on both sides. Okay, so b will equal, so on my calculator I need to do the fourth root. The way you do that is you go math, and then you see how it says the x root. Okay, one second, sorry, you got to type four first. Since we're doing the fourth root, we're going to do four, then go to math, now we're going to do the x root, which is number 5. And now I'm going to arrow up and grab the value I had before, or you can re-enter in the division part, this part here, if you can't do that. And then hit enter. This is going to tell me what my b value is. Okay, You can just round your b value to three decimal places, it's fine. So our b value is 1.002. So using our calculator, we get that this is 1.002. So our problem says to write the equation. So my equation would be uh, my a value, 1321045, times b to the x. So there is my equation. You will need to do this on your homework. So make sure if you need to, you rewatch this so you have the steps down. Now part B says, suppose the population of Phoenix continues to increase at the same rate. Estimate the population in 2015. Well, we're talking about years since 2000. So how many years is 2015 since 2000? Well, it's 15. So we plug in 15 for X. Okay, so we would go ahead. And I would recommend using this whole B value. So I would type in my A value. So 1321045. Times this value to the 15 years later, so to the 15th. And this will give me my population. Okay, so that's using my exact value. And we're talking about people. So if I write down the value that came from the calculator, if we typed it in, we got y equals 1359871. Seven nine point one one. Well, this would tell me to round to keep this at nine. One tells you to stay. So I would say one million three hundred fifty nine thousand eight hundred and seventy nine people in Phoenix in two thousand and fifteen. Okay. So there is example five. Now we have one last type of problem that we're going to be looking at. Um, we have to solve the exponential equations. Okay. The first ones are nice and easy. The base, okay? If you notice that the bases are exactly the same, then you can take the exponents and set them equal to each other and solve. So my bases were both three, so I can just say, well, then the exponents have to be the same. So 2n plus 1 has to equal 4. And now it's just a simple equation. So 2n equals 3. Divide both sides by 2. So n is equal to 3 over 2 or 1.5, whichever way you want to write it. Okay. There is example 6a. 6b looks a little more complicated. Here my base is 2, here my base is 8. So what we need to do is we need to do a little rewriting. Okay, I know I can rewrite 8 um, as 2 to the third power. And if you didn't know, you could just start trying. Well, you know 2 squared is 4, so when I try 2 to the third, that gives me 8. So some of it you might have to do a little guessing on. So 2 to the third will give me 8. So I'm going to go ahead, rewrite the left-hand side. So I have 2 squared times 2x to the 2x equals, I'm going to rewrite 8 as 2 to the third. That's what 8 is. And then it's to the x minus 1. Now remember our rules with exponents. A, prod, or a power to a power, you multiply those. So it's really 2 to the 2 times 2x would give me 4x is equal to 2 to the 3 times x minus 1, we'll just write as 3 times x minus 1. Once again, my bases are the same, so now I can set my exponents equal to each other. So 4x is equal to 3x minus 1, 
I would distribute the 3, so I would have 3x minus 3. Now I would solve. I would add, sorry, I would subtract 3x from this side. So x is equal to negative 3. And there is the correct answer. All right, we have one last example to do, so bear with me as we finish this note sheet up. We need to solve this exponential equation. This one is a little bit trickier, okay? So, I have 4 to the 2n minus 1. I have to think, can I make 64 be 4 to some power? So let's just, let's just try. We know 4 squared is 16. So I try it on here, yes, I get 16. So then let's try 4 to the 3rd. That is 64. So I'm going to rewrite 64 as 4 to the 3rd. So my left-hand side of my equation will be 4 to the 2n minus 1 is equal to 1 over 4 to the 3rd. Okay. Now we have to remember our rules of exponents. If I take this and move it up here, what happens with my exponent? It becomes negative. So it's 4 to the negative 3. If you look, my bases are now the same, so I can set my exponents equal to each other. So I'd have 2n minus 1 is equal to negative 3. Add 1. Then I would have to divide both sides by 2. So in this case, n is equal to negative 1. So there is my final answer. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, um, please write them down. Um, and make sure you ask me when you're all done with the video. Otherwise, have a great day, and I will see you later.